Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. I have six Chardonnays in front of me, four different countries, um, and uh, four from 2011, but I'm starting with the two 2012s. First of which, uh, Nederberg Wine Masters Reserve 2012 Chardonnay Western Cape. Give it a whirl. Smells okay. A um, bit of uh, lime jelly cube, if I've got anything against it, but there's some quite nice toasty oak, um, and um, feels like it's going to be a little bit simple. Um, it feels like uh, I can taste processes and ripe fruit rather than um, a place, but I may be wrong. Let's have a go. Clean, fresh, straight down the line, touch of oak. As I say, this lime, bit of citrus, but for that lime verging on the, uh, the jelly cube. It's okay, but um, it, I find it just that little bit um, bitter on the finish. Hey, next one, Vinalba Reservado Chardonnay 2012 from Mendoza. Yes, these guys have um, vineyards in uh, Patagonia as well, but uh, this one is, is from Mendoza, and I'm not quite sure whereabouts in Mendoza, but um, there's some coolish bits, Tupungato and places like that. It may be from there, it may not. Well, it weighs in at a whopping 14.5% alcohol, it's higher than all the others, uh, but when I stick my nose in there, it doesn't smell like it's um, over the top and ripe. Uh, it doesn't smell as um, confected and uh, oaky as the previous one. It actually smells quite subtle. In fact, I'm uh, subtle, to, to, subtle to the point of I keep having to shake it to see if, see if, if more comes out. There is a little bit of... Um, Vaguely nutty pineapple cashew character, uh, and uh, yeah, the more I swirl it, more a few little bits more are coming out. So uh, maybe I'll go away, have a more of a swirl and a, a sniff and a taste, and uh, come back in a moment. Well, the high alcohol, maybe the only way it comes through is there's this general voluptuousness of texture, but in terms of fruit flavours, it's not over the top, it's not overripe. Um, there is a juicy roundness and freshness. It's it's quite a it's quite a, an assertive wine, but it's not. Um, yeah, it's not too boisterous. It's um, it's actually. I mean, I I I wouldn't have put it at fourteen and a half percent if I'd tasted it, but um, I actually quite like that compared with the thirteen and a half percent of the previous one. Uh, this is a more subtle wine, uh, more going on there. I'm going to have another taste. Well, pretty good, pretty good wine. Um, okay, let's get on to the um, first of the Aussies. Um, this is Grant Burge, 2011 Summers Chardonnay uh, from the Eden, Eden Valley and um, Adelaide Hills. Alcohol-wise, we're at 12% alcohol. I mean, Australian Chardonnay has undergone a radical transformation in the last 15 years. It's gone from being what some people call Dolly Parton Chardonnay, uh, big, blousy and peachy, to um, almost the opposite extreme in some cases. Some people are picking their, their grapes when they're almost like when they've, they've just, they're, they've hardly ripened at all. And you're getting uh, what some people call skinny Chardonnay. Is this skinny or is this just, uh, just right? Let's have a see. The other thing a lot of people are doing is in terms of how they're making the wine, they are, um, Letting doing wild yeast barrel ferments on this uh, this low alcohol high acid fruit, and they're not doing lots and lots of lees stirring to try and get a, le a nutty leesy flavour. And a consequence of that is you get this um, character called reduction, absence of oxygen. If you want, if you want to uh, um, uh, get chem get chemical about it, and uh, yeah, I stick my nose in there, and it's the style that a lot of Aussies are making it now. It's ever so slightly cabbagey in a nice way, if that makes sense. If you're a fan of cabbage, you might understand. If you're not a fa fan of cabbage, you're probably going, what's he talking about? Uh, but it smells um, it smells more a winemaker's wine here than maybe a, uh, a wine from a particular place. Hey, let's try it. And I know I said much the same thing about the, the wine that was called the Wine Master's Reserve. That it tasted of the processes rather than the place. That is a criticism a lot of, of a lot of these styles. Where I think this scores over that one is it's got that crispness and leanness. It's not gone on to that jelly character. So you're getting this like, vegetal, if you want to call it, rather than if, if cabbage disturbs you. Um, a, a bit of nuttiness um, and uh, yeah, a little bit of a pineapple in there, but it's fresh pineapple rather than uh, cooked or tinned pineapple or anything like that. Citrus lift. Um, nice, uh, but um, I don't know, I still I think I actually prefer the 2.5% uh, uh, higher Vinalba to this. I have a feeling that I prefer the Vinalba at the moment, but um, if I were to um, watch these wines 
and uh, let the bottle slowly go down. I might change my mind because this is this has still got that crisp Christmas intention about it. Whereas a Vignalba has got this powerful presence. Maybe I'm going to have to do that experiment later. But maybe there'll be other wines that need to be involved in that experiment, such as wine number four, Wira Wira, the Twelfth Man, Adelaide Hills Chardonnay, going up half a percent in alcohol here, twelve and a half percent. And another one with some of those uh, reductive cabbage aromas, if you want to call it that. Um, uh, but um, here it feels like there's maybe a little bit more, uh, I don't know whether it's um, more new oak in there, giving it more of a toasty character. Uh, but it feels like there's a little bit more, a um, little bit more character to, uh, to the wine. And, um, well, I better taste it first. It's got more crispness about it, but it's also got more richness, if that makes sense. I don't know where they, where they get that from. Higher alcohol, but they seem to have got um, uh, still that tingling spine of acidity uh, uh, to, to go through. People talk about minerality. I'm never quite sure with wines like this whether it's something that's coming through the soil or whether it's that... Uh, uh, reduction that's talking there uh, and uh, get, throwing up things that taste a little bit uh, off stones and stuff like that but um, uh, whereas the one before had uh, simple is the wrong word but here it just, it just feels like a little bit more grown up and uh, I like the juiciness uh, but then when, when I've swallowed it uh, or spat it out you saw me spit no you didn't see me spit it out uh, but when I when I get to that stage uh, what I'm left with is, um, yeah, more satisfying here. Um, I, uh, so I'm going to have another drink. Of course, the danger that Australia um, is under is that having made a certain style of wine, um, and it was quite uniform in the 90s, uh, there's a certain style of wine making that is very popular now, and uh, a lot of them have the same, uh, the same imprint. But uh, the Wirra Wirra for me is uh, a step up from the Grant Burge. Uh, let's have a trip over um, the sea to uh, uh, to New Zealand and in particular to um, Hawke's Bay for the Craggy Range Single Vineyard Chardonnay 2011 Kidnappers Vineyard. Well, I'm keeping swirling this and uh, uh, I have to say that it's, it seems to be not coming out to play at the moment. Um, I get a general crisp stoniness about it, um, not the um, vegetal reductive character that was in the previous two, but... Um, Yes, it's, it feels really backward and uh, uh, as if to say I'm not coming out just for the moment. So uh, maybe I'll give it a, uh, do some more swirling and come back. I find that a slightly safe wine. I like the flavours. Uh, I like this Christmas. I like the citrus. Um, I like a little bit of the, the, the green apple freshness and, uh, uh, and I like the finish. But um, uh, whereas the previous two that uh, I think they both use wild yeast here, here it feels that, that somebody, the person who's been in charge, has wanted to really just make sure that everything goes through perfectly and not taken maybe the risks that were taken on the, the, the previous two. Um, and uh, so you're left with a wine that is tasty um, uh, and, uh, and correct, but maybe just that little bit too correct. Um, I'll be very interested to see uh, the de relative development of, uh, the, of the Wirra Wirra and, uh, and the Craggy. So I'll, I'll keep a watch over, on them over the next few hours. Uh, but here it feels like a wine that will not uh, offend, whereas the Wirra Wirra is a wine that will provoke more excitement and maybe offend a few people, if that makes sense. Uh, there used to be, uh, you don't hardly hear it now, people talking about shabbly style wines. And... Um, that for me has got something that is um, uh, has got that uh, that fine boned um, structure of Chablis, uh, but maybe not um, not the depth of flavour of, uh, of of the best of Chablis. But there are some Chablis that tastes pretty much like that. Uh, final wine. Uh, we are in Western Australia now for McHenry Honan 2011 Calgardup Brook Vineyard uh, Chardonnay from Margaret River. Ooh, give it a whirl. Now this smells like someone's taken some of the voluptuous Vignalba 
and some of the uh, vegetally uh, wirra wirra and mix them together. It feels like it's, it's, it's 13 and a half percent. It's the highest alcohol of these. Uh, um, what was it 13 or 13 and a half? 13 and a half. Um, yeah, it's the highest alcohol of these 2011s. So it feels like it's got a richness, but with this um, particular winemaking imprint. So that, uh, uh, yeah, the mixture of the citrus uh, with the um, a bit of the toasty pineapple and nuttiness and some of that cabbage. Rounded, rich, juicy. Too rounded, rich and juicy? I'm not sure. Um, I, um, it's one of those that, uh, it's quite a warm day here and uh, these, are, these have been somewhat cool before I tasted them. Uh, and maybe it's because it's the last one I've come to and it's the highest alcohol of these 2011s. But I notice a little bit of the heat of the alcohol uh, compared with, the, the, with, with what was going on in the previous three wines. Uh, but I do like the flavours. Uh, there's ripeness here, but it's not never too ripe. There's this little bit of, um, there's almost like uh, something like Victoria Plum in there, which I never think of uh, uh, as that character coming through in Chardonnay. Uh, but uh, yes, some citrus, some, uh, some peach, nectarine, and um, intriguing that. Uh, I, um, I, this, is a, this is one of those tastings where I, I, I was talking about uh, the, uh, the, the Vignalba uh, and the um, uh, and the Grant version, how I, I probably I prefer the Vignalba at the moment, but it might change over the course of the next few hours. Um, got a feeling that with with some of these here, that some of them may come out of their shell, and some of them have already come out of their shell a bit too much and need to retreat into it. Maybe it's serving temperature. I don't want to get hung up about serving temperature. Serve this wine at 12.73 degrees. Um, you, I, I, I want to because um, you put it in a room that's 12. Point 74 degrees and it warms up um, or you put it in the hands of somebody who's um, who's um, who's rather who's just come back from a run and uh, he warms it up and boils the wine in his hand I um I, I, I like them as I, I mean my, my I, I'm not not a big fan of the uh, uh, of, of the the Naderberg, but the other five all had something to say for it say for themselves at the moment uh, the craggy is the one that I'm most confused about uh, and it may be that it, it emerges with time but I will report back and um, otherwise I will see you soon. <laughs>